Hi, I'm Mike, owner of the Ingroove in Phoenix, Arizona. So a couple of days ago, Rhino announced they are doing a new Rhino Hi-Fi audio file series. It's a couple of records a quarter, so what is that, eight records a year? It's not a ton of stuff, but let me tell you about it, and I'll give you my kind of thoughts on the titles they selected and my thoughts on the program overall. So first, let me start by telling you what they chose uh, for the initial two. The car self-titled album and John Coltrane's Coltrane Sound. Both records have been done recently. Uh, the Coltrane sound is a Tom Dowd product recording-wise. Not that good sounding to begin with. Not nuts about that choice, but it's musically it's a great record. But ORG did it at 45 RPM, which I think is still in print. And Rhino for years had a 33 RPM tip-on jacket. I think it was RTI Press, Bernie Grunman All Analog Cut. So there's a decent amount of that floating out there, and it's not really expensive to get either of those two versions. The other one is the cars. Mobile Fidelity did it by 2008, 2009, and they did it. It was all analog, you know, kind of probably right when they started DSD, but really didn't do everything DSD at that point. But I actually think that's a weak point for Mobile Fidelity. That 2005 to 2010, 11, 12, was not the strongest MoFi stuff. I think DSD actually helped their sound a lot and gave them the ability to do what they are doing now, which I think in general is significantly better than that era. So not the worst choices because it's a series that's going to be all, at, at this point, I think it's going to be all analog cut by Kevin Gray. So the details are all analog, cut by Kevin Gray, numbered to 5,000, at least with the two that are out now. Uh, Tip-on style jacket, so heavy cardboard jacket, all analog, Kevin Gray cut. Uh, essays, you know, there's tchotchke type stuff, which I think is completely unnecessary, and 99% of vinyl collectors do not want that stuff. It takes too much space on the shelf. You know, by including all those things, uh, you know, you're just expanding the size of the record per se. So that stuff, I don't think they care about. This is a direct to consumer product. This is going to be $40 a record for these two anyways, direct to consumer. You can only get it from Rhino. 5,000 copies direct from Rhino only. I do think sound wise, Kevin Gray at this point is my favorite mastering engineer. I think overall a higher percentage of his stuff is like definitive. It's great. It's you're not disappointed. There's other great mastering engineers out there, but for instance, when I get a Blue Note title that's been done analog by Bernie versus Kevin, I prefer the Kevin cut. Or if it's a prestige title, if it's a Miles Davis, I tend to prefer the Kevin cut stuff. And overall, the way he masters, my ear likes it better. Uh, I think he could create an improvement on the Coltrane sound. And I actually, like I said, I'm not a huge fan of the MoFi car stuff. So I think as a whole, that can be approved upon. The original sounded great, but it was heavily compressed. So that can be approved upon. Kind of similar to what MoFi did to Michael Jackson's Thriller. They took out all that compression. It changed the feel of the record, but it really opened the record up. You could hear a lot more of what was going on. And I think that could be the beneficiary here when it comes to the Cars title. So I think these are going to be great titles. Now let's talk about the business strategy that they have employed here. 5,000 copies direct to consumer. I think this is egregious. It's egregious for a very specific reason. I'm getting to the point now I am so tired of the manufacturer collectibles when it comes to vinyl records. I get multiple people in the shop all the time. They're new to vinyl. They want to see what's going on. They come in. Maybe somebody bought them a Crosley or, you know, they're there getting a couple records. But a lot of people come to the shop. They don't know what vinyl's capable of. I'll put a good rec record on, a good master, a tone poet, uh, an analog productions title. You know, it's something high quality. Play it for them on a decent system and their mind explodes. They just can't believe what they're hearing. And the first question is, oh, I want to buy stuff that sounds like this. What do I do? Well, if they're jazz collectors, I can, oh, look for the tone poet. Look for the analog productions. Look for the contemporary series stuff. Look for the new OJC stuff. These are all, as a rule of thumb, going to be quite good. But when it comes to rock, that's not easy to do. 
you know. The MoFi stuff, they make a lot of great titles, but not everything is great that they make. Uh, the analog production stuff is a lot of great stuff, but it's also more musically limiting. You know, they're not doing a ton of the high, I mean, they got Steely Dan, but they're not doing a lot of high caliber rock titles. Do you know what I mean? It's a lot of blues, a lot of jazz, and a smattering of rock. But it's not a ton of stuff. So what Rhino is doing is essentially, you know, I feel like it's bad for the industry. I need as a store to be able to come in, show people how easy this hobby is. Come in, buy records. They sound great. It's no, not a problem. It's accessible. Where this is this new way of buying and selling or buying records is we're fostering this mentality of everything is a manufactured collectible. They're announcing the new such and such. You better get online. You better, you know, be quick. It could sell out. It's there's just absolutely no reason we need to have 5,000 high quality records and then infinite amounts of mediocre shitty pressings. There's no reason. We should have a lot of supply of high quality records. Tone Poet has done it. Blue Note Tone Poet is the greatest thing that's happened for vinyl in decades. They actually showed other labels who have now followed suit. And I don't think anybody can honestly say that they're not following Blue Note's lead here in the fact that they made high quality, extremely accessible albums. You can get them online. You can get them on every retailer, record store. You can get them in Europe. You can get them in Canada. They're, they're a worldwide, high quality audiophile release. They're accessible. Everybody else follows suit. We've got Kraft doing, or the uh, Concord Group doing OJCs. we got contemporaries now. There's tons and tons of choices for jazz, but there is not a ton of choices for rock. And this could have been that for Rhino. I don't know who they're serving by doing a 5,000 limited direct-to-consumer only product. You know, most vinyl consumers, I don't think, are hardened collectors who are shopping online and know everything that's coming out. I mean, who has time? I have a record store. I do this all day, every day, and I'm having a difficult time keeping up. The latest craft dispensary uh, top shelf jazz series direct to consumer only, or the craft one step direct to consumer only, or a vinyl me please. If you want a good vinyl me please title, you can't just go into a store and buy it. You can't even just go onto their website and buy it. You gotta buy a subscription, or maybe a, a band releases a one off limited item. It is getting crazily convoluted and is becoming difficult to keep up. Your average person just wants to be able to go online or go into a store and buy a record. They don't they have a job, they have a life, they don't have enough time to just spend all day every day hunting these things down, sitting waiting for the pre-order announcement to drop. That's nonsense and it needs to stop. And I thought it kind of would have a little bit. COVID kind of in the rear view mirror now. We don't have the you know, the FOMO going like crazy anymore. One steps don't sell out anymore. UHQRs don't sell out anymore. But now we've got manufacturers doing this even more. We got more. I've seen, like I said, the the, the one, the jazz uh, dispensary top shelf, direct to consumer. All the things I've just listed. It's this is a bad thing for the hobby. People get frustrated when things become overly convoluted and difficult. And it's not good for the, the, the industry. If you look at the best-selling Mobile Fidelity record in the modern era, it was Weezer uh, Blue. Why do you think Weezer Blue was so successful? It's not because I sold seven times more Weezer Blues than everybody else. It's because they put it in Urban Outfitters and it sold like gangbusters. I promise you the average person that's going into Urban Outfitters buying a Weezer album is not your hardened audiophile who is going onto Rhino's website looking for the latest Rhino special audiophile edition. It's not. It's your average consumer. You should make high quality product that hits all the boxes with the audiophile consumer. I think this series is going to be musically great. I'm looking forward to it. But there's going to be so many people that never get to partake in it because they don't even know it exists. They're not going to have the ability to just 
Go into a record store and find this stuff. They're never going to be exposed to this. And maybe that's going to be the customer that goes to a record store and they buy six or seven modern shitty pressings and say, you know what, this is a pain in my ass. I'm just, you know what, this has all my music on it and I don't have to worry about warp, scratch, pops, clicks, hisses, dirty, paper scuffs. I don't have to worry about all that. Or we can make an accessible product to the consumer that's not a jazz or classical release, a good rock release that somebody's looking for. We can make those accessible products, make them available to the consumer, and give the consumer the confidence to know, you know what? Maybe not everything is like this, but if I buy this Rhino High Q quality stuff, I've had luck with it before, it's, it's available, it's going to sound good, and we need more of that. Not two direct-to-consumer a quarter records. That's just nonsense. There's... That catalog is too great, musically and quantity-wise. We need to have these higher quality products in print. People will pay for it. I can only, I can only tell you how many of a high quality. I, I've sold high, you know, I've sold four-digit quantities of tone, certain tone poets. That's a jazz album. Records that probably didn't sell that quantity in the whole country when it was a new record, in weeks. And little old The Ingroove have sold huge numbers of these records. I can only imagine and extrapolate how many quantity of some of these titles they've sold. I would imagine titles like Blue Train, Tone Poets have sold 20, 30, 40, 50,000. It's got to be an astronomical number. Why are we limiting to 5,000 a high quality rock title? Why are we making it inaccessible to the average consumer. Do they not deserve a high quality reissue? Do they only deserve the uh, printed on cardboard, digitally sourced, uh, you know, mediocre version? What about the people who aren't in the vinyl yet? They gotta go buy this on the secondary market in the future for 150 bucks? We can't keep this stuff in print for a decent amount of time, make it accessible for everybody? So like I say, I'm conflicted on this in the sense that I think it's going to be a great product. I think it's more than likely going to be probably definitive versions on both of these records. Kevin Gray is just, I don't know, I don't know if he's got robots mastering all these records, but the fact that he's mastering as many records as he is and they're of the quality that they are is unbelievable. It just truly is. What he's doing and the quality of what he's doing Holy cow, it's great. And I think he's going to hit it out of the park with this one. I just wish more of you would have the ability to experience it. And I wish the people who didn't watch this channel and didn't care about this and don't go on forums because they've got other things to do, you know what I mean? I wish they got to experience this. I wish they could come into the store and discover that for the first time, be blown away and come back into the store and be like, holy cow, what else can I get like this? And that's never going to happen. It's just not. There needs to be high quality rock reissues coming out in mass not here and there but quantity in mass rhino did it before rhino did high quality analog reissues back when almost nobody was buying vinyl and nobody cared but now that people care what the hell happened i, I don't get it doesn't make sense to me all right guys check out the website at theingroove.com until next time